Okay, so this is uh, 9.1 part two, and we're looking at objective four, that's where we left off, which is inverses. Inverse defined, when a binary operation is performed on two elements in a set, and the result is the identity element for the binary operation, each element is the inverse of the other. There's two that we're gonna be looking up, and it's the additive inverse, and then the other one is the multiplicative inverse. So let's check out what we're supposed to put in these um, dashes right here. It says, what do I need to multiply seven by to get the product of one? Okay, well, if I have seven times what equals one? Seven times it's reciprocal, which is one over seven equals one. Is that element one over seven in the integer set? And the answer is no. So it is, it does not, um, this multiplication does not work uh, for the inverse property if you're asking it if it's uh, part of the um, identity set. Okay, so what do I need to add to negative four to get the sum of zero? All right, so if I add negative four plus what equals zero? Well, I need force opposite, which is, excuse me, I need negative force opposite, which is four. So four is that in the integer set? And the answer is yes. Four is in the integer set. Okay, so an identity element is either a zero or a one. So that's what goes in there. So what do I need to multiply by to get one? And what do I need to add to get negative four? And by the way, this is called the additive inverse. So the additive inverse, and to write it up in max, math speak, it's a plus negative a equals zero. And the multiplicative inverse, and once again, I said multiplicative inverse, uh, we can write this up as a times one over a equals one. Okay, so that's what the, the inverse means. So what do I need to add, you know, in, in terms of addition, it's its opposite, and in terms of, of multiplication, it is its reciprocal. So now let's look at objective number four, which is groups. Four properties of groups. A mathematical system must meet the following to be considered a group. The set of elements has to be closed under a different uh, under the given operation. So that means that when I add or multiply or subtract or whatever, that has to be in the set that we're looking at. Whatever the answer is, it has to be in that set. An identity element exists for the set under the given operation. Remember, it keeps its identity. So if I add zero to the number, does the number come out to be itself? That kind of thing. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and highlight that one. Uh, every element in the set has an inverse operation. So remember, we just learned about inverse. That's the numbers, uh, either the numbers reciprocal, if we're looking at multiplication, or it's opposite if we're looking at addition. And the set of elements is associative under the given operation. So we look at the associative meaning that we can, you know, add three numbers together and if we put parentheses around the two and then keep the order the same, then the, the uh, sum has to be the same. So I made a little acronym that works with this. You're in the CIA. So we need the in part and the CIA. The in part stands for inverse. The CIA, the C stands for closed. I stands for uh, identity. And then A stands for the associative property. Okay, so in the CIA, I hope that helps you. But that's how you know if something's a group. So to be a group, it has to meet all four criteria to be a group. Okay, so here's where things get a little tricky in my opinion. Uh, 
There is a quick note, and let me go over this really quick. Uh, it's very time consuming to show the associative property. So therefore, in the book and on the online homework, it will state the associative property holds. So that way you don't have to check that one usually. All right, so objective number five is talking about the commutative group. So the commutative group has to meet all four properties to be a group, and then it has to meet the property of being commutative. So remember, commutative is to change the order and we get the same thing. For instance, A plus B equals B plus A, or A times B equals B times A. This one's addition, and this is a binary operation of multiplication. Okay? All right, so let's look at the five properties. Once again, like I said, you're in the CIA. It has to be closed. It has to have an identity element. Every element in the set has an inverse, and the set of elements is associative and commutative. So now there's five. So in the CIA, C. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw Men in Black, but they would call it Agent, you know, A, B. So you could pretend like you're Agent C. Okay. All right. So next is the, the example says, determine if the mathematical system consists of the set of whole numbers under the operation of addition forms a group. Okay, so we're just looking to see if it forms a group, not in particular an associative group. By the way, when we check these, and we have to check four properties for this one, if one of them comes out to be no, or if there is a situation where it doesn't meet it, then the whole thing is not a group. Okay. So it's asking us about the set of whole numbers. This is very important. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that whole number set down. So the whole number set is zero, one, two, three, dot, dot, dot. All right, so we know the whole number set does not contain any negative numbers or fractions or decimals or irrational numbers. So what are the four properties that we have to look? Remember the acronym was in the CIA. Uh, we have to check to see if, if the inverse property holds. Is it closed? Um, remember, we have to check every single element. Uh, inverse. Oh, I wrote that down. Sorry. Um, the I stands for identity. And then finally, associative. Okay, so we're going to guess that the associative holds. Uh, let's check the rest of them inverse. Uh, let's check that first. So remember we're doing addition. So remember it's a plus negative a equals zero, right? So let's check any number in the whole number set. Let's try one. So one plus what equals zero? And hopefully you said negative one here. That's a problem because it's negative one in the whole number set. Negative one is not in the whole number set. So right now, I know this is not a group. And like I said, when it fails one of them, then you don't even have to check the rest. But let's say that you didn't catch that and you did closed first. So is this closed? If I add two numbers in this set, do I get a number in the set? Well, let's check. Zero plus one equals one. 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 3 is 5, so all of them work. So the answer to that one would be yes. Let me put a little note up here. Uh, identity. Remember, it keeps its identity, so I can add any number, 0, plus 0. Does that equal 0? Yes. So this works as well. Associative property, we just put a check mark. So the only one it fails is the inverse because we do not have negative numbers in the whole number set. So it is not a group. Once again, that is your answer, not a group. Why? Because it uh, flunks or it does not have a, an inverse that is in the whole number set. Okay. All right. Let's check out this next one. Determine whether the set of rational numbers under the operation of multiplication forms a group. First of all, what's the rational number set? Remember, they are all the integers 
plus fractions plus, they're also decimals. Okay, so the four properties, remember in the CIA, so inverse, they have to be closed. They have to have the identity property. And then there's one more, associative property. So like I said, I'm going to just check this one off. We're going to check the other three. So the inverse property says that the number has to have an inverse. And remember, we're checking this time around multiplication. So if you remember, the multiplicative inverse is that, that number's fraction, right? That number's, uh, I shouldn't say fraction, but it's, it's um, reciprocal. So does the number have a reciprocal? Okay, well, let's check it out. Five, does five have a reciprocal? That's one-fifth. Is one-fifth in that number set? The answer is yes. We get into trouble when we try to do this with zero. The zero times what equals one? Because remember, this has to equal one. And zero times anything is zero, so nothing works for it. So it flunks when it comes to inverse. The answer is no, because zero kind of screws things up. Okay, that is an exception to the rule. That's a counterexample. Uh, let's just go for the heck of it and check the rest of them. Is it closed? Well, if I add any fraction plus another fraction, or zero, I just wrote that down, I get a number in that set, so that's not a problem. Same with decimals. I mean, I could add a decimal to a fraction. You know, let's do one half. So 0.5 plus one half is one. That's okay. So it is closed. And the identity, remember, for something to keep its identity under multiplication. And by the way, I'm just going to go up here and fix this close business because remember, we're supposed to be checking multiplication, not addition. So let me just change this up. So if I multiply 1 fourth times 0, it doesn't equal 1 fourth, it equals 0. Okay, we have to be careful because we're doing uh, multiplication. And 0.5 times 1 half, so now I have basically 1 half times 1 half is one fourth, so it still is okay, and the answer is yes, but I just accidentally wrote down addition. All right, so something to keep its identity, uh, we have to multiply something by one, right? So any of those numbers, I don't know, let's pick one fourth. One fourth times one equals what? One fourth, is that a number in the set? The answer is yes, okay? Um, even zero works. Zero times one equals zero. So it keeps its identity. So this is okay. So the answer to this is yes overall. All right. So once again, if it, if it does not meet one of the criteria, the whole thing is not a group. So the answer to this is this is not a group. And the reason why is because it does not meet the inverse criteria. Okay. So that's your answer, not a group. Let's look at the next example. Explain your answer to the following. Part A. Is a set of positive integers a group under the operation of addition? The set of positive integers, guys, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Okay? Because it's positive integers. All right. The operation of addition. So check it out. Uh, 1 plus 2, what's that equal? 3. Is 3 a number in that set? Yes. Um, so it's okay. It does hold for the uh, set of positive integers, so we can say it's closed. So let's see this next one. Is the set of negative integers in a group under the operation of division? Okay. Negative integers is negative 3, negative 2, negative 1 etc. And we're going to put dot, dot, dot over here on this left-hand side. So let's do that, dot, 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 because it's going in the negative direction. So we have all the negative numbers. So let's check it out. Let's do negative 3 over negative 2. Well, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. Is the positive number in the set of negative integers? The answer is no. So this does not hold under the operation of division. Okay, guys, and that's the last example. So for these, you're going to have, you know, some homework problems, and I probably will ask you some questions on this. Make sure you really understand 
those four criteria uh, for something to be a group, because if you understand that, then these problems become very easy. If not, uh, you know, even if, if you do understand them, sometimes they're tricky. So just be careful. Check zero is my advice to you. All right. Um, take it easy. And the next one you're going to have to watch is 9.3. Don't forget to put your notes to upload them to Canvas after you're done filling them out to get points.